Well, now, have you ever suffered from a terrible migraine, shortness of breath, a nasty skin condition? If so, have you ever thought it could be the skin or hair products you're using? Well, Adelaide's cosmetic crusaders convinced a majority of the everyday creams, gels and soaps we use are making us ill. And as Vassal Melandris reports, she's on a mission to clean up the industry. There are still a lot of nasties out there. How would you react if you knew that some of these skin and hair products that you're putting on you have cancer-causing agents, oh boy. Uh, can damage nerves? I would never use it. Never, ever. Doesn't bother you what you put on your skin? I don't really want to know. <laughs> the only thing that really matters to me about makeup is the price and the brand. We should be concerned about the typical cosmetic and personal care products that you find in supermarkets. From shampoo to soap, toothpaste to nail polish remover. They all serve a purpose, but have you ever stopped to think what's in these everyday products? Are they safe or could they be placing your health at risk? There are compromising ingredients in nine out of 10 products on the market, at least. This is Adelaide's cosmetic crusader, Catherine Griss. Feared and loathed by department stores in her quest to police a largely unregulated industry. And she has good reason to stick her neck out. Catherine says by the time we leave our homes in the morning, it's likely we've been exposed to nearly 200 questionable chemicals. How important is it to police what goes on in the industry? Look, it's absolutely important. It's been shown in, in studies as well that anything that's taken through your skin is absorbed up to 95% better than if you take it orally. Once it's absorbed into the skin, Catherine says there's no stopping these nasties from getting into our bloodstream and onto our major organs. The skin is one of our first lines of defence against disease and bacteria entering the body. Is it a risk worth taking? I wouldn't take it. Compromising chemicals may be the reason why this Adelaide retiree was gasping for air recently. Everything was closed here, yeah. I couldn't breathe, I, I, I thought, I must die. I, really, it was a horrible feeling. Anita Yankovic is still reeling after using a swathe of Avon products she claims caused a reaction that was severe and spontaneous. The lip balm I put on, and then it was a tingly feeling, and my lips goes numb. Even my tongue, I put mascara on both eyes, especially here on the side, were infected. Were close and a little bit wet. I uh, shampooed my hair, and uh, it was uh, like I had a lot of chemical in my mouth. I couldn't breathe. An allergy or something more sinister. Avon were at pains to tell us all their products are safe and that they rarely receive such complaints. However, it's not just cheap door-to-door -door cosmetics that we need to be concerned about. Catherine argues the boutique brands also have a lot to answer for. You know, they will use emulsifiers and stabilisers, uh, chemical stabilisers and preservatives and other health compromising ingredients. And then also you've got to look at the packaging. You know, plastic packaging can cause problems as well. So here's her latest checklist on what to avoid, starting with that sudsy lathering agent in shampoo and soap. Sulfates are often disguised as being coconut oil. It's anything but that now. It's got undergone so much chemical processing that's often rendered a skin irritant and often worse. Ever wonder why you're constantly ranked with migraines or suffer shortness of breath? It could be linked to an ingredient commonly used in many products called urea. Catherine says it's just a fancy name for a type of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde can be written as urea and a bunch of other chemicals. Now the scary thing with that is it can cause anything from depression to respiratory problems, headaches, nausea and worse. And the list goes on from EDTA, which is a carcinogen, cancer causing agent, to MIT. MIT is a short name for a very long chemical preservative and the problem with it is that it's been linked with um, nerves not being able to connect properly and talk to each other. And the ingredient that comes up time and again, often tested on animals and condemned by a British health study, parabens. 
Parabens are obviously one of the worst offenders. They have been positively linked with breast cancer. But perhaps what alarms Catherine the most is that government legislation actually exempts personal care products like deodorant or perfume which provide a function from fully needing to disclose their ingredients, palming them off as simply fragrance. Fragrance, yeah, definitely. And that can take up to, you know, thousands of different chemicals just to produce one aroma. Four years ago, Catherine decided enough was enough, releasing her own range of certified organic products not tested on animals. Oh, it's absolutely clean and green. We don't mix oils and water together because nature doesn't do it. OK, so, you know, if to mix oil and water together, you have to do some chemical processing and add another ingredient that's been chemically processed to blend the two together. And like I say, nature doesn't do it, so why should we do it? and from her home base in Mount Compass to Hollywood. The success of her Kush brand has exceeded her own expectations. There's a celebrity facialist in the UK just going to launch Kush in, in Mayfair, London in June. And uh, she goes around the world and just picks the cream of the crop and, and she um, is totally in love with Kush. And Mel Gibson's soon to be ex-wife, Robin Moore. No, you're not blaming Kush as being the breaking point. No, well, you know, I thought maybe she didn't share. Hollywood may also be responsible for this inspired choice. She's covered in paint, gold paint. 24 karat gold and sterling silver face masks. Gold is the most powerful anti-aging component known to man and it energises the skin and promotes collagen production. The silver, it tones the skin and soothes sensitive skin. Despite a potential backlash from the cosmetics industry, Catherine Griss is refusing to back down. How do you convince consumers who are probably driven by price and convenience to not take products when they don't know what the long-term results are? Well, we see Kush really as um, a first place of education so that people can at least be self-educated about what the pros and cons are, and then it's totally up to them. It's freedom of choice. Well, Vassal Melandris with that report.